Okay, welcome back everybody to Global Small Talk. I am your host, Irene, and today we'll be talking about partnerships for climate. So today we have a very special guest to help us discuss this, and <laughs> I'm actually going to let her introduce herself. So, Ate Nina, you can go ahead. Hi, um, okay, um, so I can share a bit about me. Na lang. Um, so I'm Nina Katipon. I am a fourth year environmental science student um, in Ateneo de Manila. Uh, I was the former um, president of um, the Ateneo Environmental Science Society. And during my term, we founded um, together with uh, different environmental organizations all over the country. Um, the Philippine Association of Environmental Science Students. So it's a bunch of um, environmental science students from different universities um, in one big association or network. So yeah, I'm also a climate reality leader like Irene. Um, and yeah, I, I do a lot of other work on the side, um, just exploring the different um, uh, fields um, under environmental advocacy. So, yeah. Thank you, Atelina. Honestly, I was looking your, uh, through your Facebook profile. I looked last night, I think, and I looked at your credentials and I was like, wow, that's a lot. <laughs> it's really, ano po, uh, it's really inspiring to see. So I think let's get started now about the topic. So Obviously, partnerships for climate, it's a really broad topic, but we'll dive deeper into the personal aspect of it. So in line of that, uh, what personal experiences have you had in building partnerships or relationships within the climate space? Uh, okay, um, I think um, maybe my work hasn't focused too much on partnerships for the climate, but uh, when I was in AESS, uh, which is um, the org I mentioned earlier, um, every year before the pandemic happened, we'd always partner up with the Pawikan Conservation Center. So that's in Morong Bataan. So um, we've uh, visited them every year um, just to partner with them in terms of having our members kind of experience um, seeing the process by which, you know, Pawikans are conserved by the community there and also to kind of maybe see for themselves um, if they're lucky um, uh, Pawikan um, nesting. So that's one of the things that um, we did. Um, but unfortunately, unfortunately, um, we've had to pause that um, due to the pandemic so we can't really go there. Um, so yes, um, and also um, same with AESS, we got to kind of partner with different um, environmental organizations um, around the country, um, specifically environmental science organizations. So um, students who are taking um, their studies in environmental science or any environment aligned um, course, both in the undergraduate and master level, uh, we were able to form this association and organization um, called PAES, or the Philippine Association of Environmental Science Students. And eventually, I think it's still growing in number, um, the number of members that we have. But to my knowledge, we have um, organizations from across the Philippines, I think, um, including uh, Mindoro, Mindoro State University, I think, um, Visayas um, State University, um, in Ateneo, uh, my own university. And so it's just trying to strengthen the ties of this and to you know really have people see environmental science as a career choice um, and to have people join us in the org. Um, yeah, I think that's um, one personal experience that I've encountered uh, when it comes to, um, to partnerships and the environment. Wow, that's a lot. I was actually really happy to hear that you were able to partner with schools from all over the Philippines, uh, especially in like Visayas and Mindanao, because often they get in, they get excluded, which it's really important that they're included in these types of conversations now. So, uh, do you think or do you find that the partnerships you've made with the with these organizations and the people in those organizations, do you find that they've lasted and 
you know, how does it feel to be forming these bonds with people who share the same cause as you? All right. Um, so I feel that it was a rare occurrence for these partnerships to last. Um, I think um, I'm lo- we are lucky, at least our organization was lucky that we were able to have a lasting partnership. Um, and we really, from the get-go, we intended the partnership to be long-term. I think that's what we really wanted, especially for PAES, because it's forming this whole new association. Um, and I think that it was really important because even though we're all, say, environmental science students, there's a different expertise um, when it comes to the different university um, and some um, are more experienced um, in some topics. Um, and yeah, I think that we can all learn from each other. And I think that's really important when you're having partnerships, um, especially in the environmental advocacy um, so that you can amplify and um, have a greater impact um, rather than if you do something alone as an organization. So, yeah. So, uh, you mentioned that when I'm making an impact, uh, it's a lot bigger when there are like partners and orgs or like friends. And uh, so, do you think, uh, or rather, have you had like, have you seen of like visual or physical manifestation na parang, uh, the climate movement is being furthered by these partnerships or like the climate movement is getting bigger because of these partnerships? Um, I think for PAES, in our, in our context, we're still starting out, but I definitely can see it going somewhere. Um, so I think for one of our members um, in Ateneo de Naga, they started an initiative um, which was eventually integrated into, into PAES. And so its reach is larger. Um, and it's not just focused on in Naga. Um, while community-based solutions are important, it's also trying to connect those with other communities. Um, so I think that project was um, an alert system in a way for possible typhoons or storms. And that was really focused on Naga before. Um, and then eventually it was adopted and so it's becoming an, a national thing. Um, so yeah, I can definitely see an impact um, growing from that. And um, yeah, because I think what's so nice about partnerships, I'm sorry, what's nice about partnerships is that, especially if it's not usually, say an environmental org that you're partnering with. In one of the org- in one of my organizations, we partnered with um, an organization that's more focused on film, um, so video production and everything. But what our project was, was a film screening. And so that peaked into their interest. And so if you can find um, a common ground, even for organizations that aren't environment related, you can see that it's reaching more people and there's more impact because other people are interested in the film aspect of it. And that's a place that you can draw them into the advocacy. I agree, you know, I uh, think the, parang, if we partner with orgs or like even just individuals interested in different fields, we'd have like a wider range <laughs> or, or a bigger audience, which is so important to this uh, climate movement. So I want to ask now, uh, what is or what has been the biggest challenge you faced when you were like trying to build these partnerships? So, right. I think the biggest challenge, I think, was when I was um, president for AESS. Um, I think during the pandemic, um, and I was talking to the former officers, we saw a surge in partnership proposals being sent to us. Um, and that's good because people want to partner it. But I think what was difficult was to kind of figure out which ones are um, could last long, could be sustainable. Because majority of the partnerships that we were also receiving were more on based on an exchange of likes and shares. So promote our event and we'll give you um, 10 likes to your Facebook page. Well, it's good for exposure. It just um, begs the question of, um, where are we tapping into the different expertise of 
um, of these organizations where we can make you know meaningful collaboration, um, especially on uh, you know an important issue like climate change. So I think that was always my frustration um, going into you know organization work. Um, it's always um, how do we um, encourage others? I think that's that's I think maybe that's a frustration of the maybe different organization heads. I've noticed it that there's not much co-organizing or collaboration, but rather an exchange um, of it parang transaction in a way na um, do this for us and we'll give you um, a like and uh, like and share and stuff like that. So it's not too much of something that can be sustained because you don't get to really figure out what's important to that organization. You don't get to interact with them much besides those um, besides those emails and um, it's not a lot of uh, getting to know even the people behind the organization and stuff so yeah i think the meaningfulness of the partnerships that are being created um that's that's a very big challenge i guess yes um so since you mentioned Yana, it's hard to like actually get to know the orgs how did you like, what was the process like of screening these organizations and making sure now, oh, we're going to benefit from each other? So what was that like? Mm, I think in AESS, we always had the system um, of whether, um, I think for sure, um, because it's an environmental org that kind of lowers the, um, or uh, makes the group smaller the options uh, less in a way um, because you want to uh, partner with people who are in line with what you stand for and for us um, what we stood for was logical environmentalism so anything that we call eco-friendly must have a scientific basis because we're environmental science students um, so that was something that uh, we really stood by and if we couldn't find that um, in an organization uh, usually we didn't you know, send out the partnership proposal uh, and everything. And I guess um, when it came to PAES, when we were exploring creating this um, national org, um, we wanted to know, um, you know, why we were in, uh, interested in it for the first place. So we all had a, a call with, uh, with interested organizations, which was led by the current president, um, Kendrick Caronilo. Um, so... That was really nice because um, we got to know each other, um, the advocacies of the different people. And then from then on, we all realized that, oh, there are so many different places that this can go. Um, and I think from the first meeting, we all agreed that it was something that we wanted to, to really venture into um, founding this organization that was nationwide. So yeah, I think it was really getting to know them, getting to know who you'll be working with, seeing um the different things that people could contribute um so yeah yes okay that's really nice then i think getting to know muna the orgs no it's really important before you're establishing like a professional relationship with them especially for collaboration and stuff like that so um i think at the end i want to ask you now uh before i mean beyond like partnerships with orgs and others like institutions uh, how have you or rather have you had like any experience building personal relationships within the climate space and how how has that been for you yeah um, that's a good question i think um the personal relationships and friendships kumbaga, um They've always been one of the more um, what do you call this? I feel I find them to be more effective at finding points of collaboration rather than you know if you're very formal if you um, if you speak very professionally and not to say that that's that's bad but sometimes I feel like for me as a person who's very outgoing I want to be friends with everyone you want to look for people who are allies in this movement. Diba? And and for that, it's a it's an, an emotional roller coaster um being in this advocacy. So you'd want to get a support system in a kind of way um with the people that you're working with or people you could potentially work with. So I feel that that's something that um 
I've really valued finding those uh, personal um, relationships. So um, through climate reality, I've made so many friendships um, through uh, through that. Um, and you kind of get to see what people find important and eventually start bouncing ideas off of, off of each other. Like, oh, what if we try doing this? Uh, what if we try hosting this 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 activity? Of what 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 if we partner with this organization? So it's a lot more comfortable for you know bouncing ideas off of each other, I think. Um, and I guess also to kind of humanize them as well. Like they're not just an organization. Um, for example, if you're looking at a part, potential partner, there are always always people behind it. So it's not um, it's really moving beyond the transactional aspect of partnerships. Um, actually, um, while the professional aspect is important, I feel that the personal is what will make it last, um, what will sustain it. Like We find it important to us to keep this partner. Recently, I got to go back to Bataan, I think just over the weekend, um, to back to PCC um, on my own with my family because you can't do that as an organization. Um, and I was able to talk to Mang Manolo, um, the one who runs the PCC. Um, and of course, our point of um, you know, starting the conversation was, oh, I'm from AESS, we visited in the past. So that's a good way to kind of connect to people. Um, because um, wala na yung AESS, wala yung partnership, they can't go to Bataan right now. So nawala yung professional kumbaga na, na they go to that. But I feel that knowing the community knowing what they're going through. Um, it's always um, good to see, you know, if there's anything, any support that they would need. Um, um, and they feel much more comfortable, um, especially if it's not just, um, yeah, like what I mentioned, the transactional kind of relationship. I like actually adding on your point now, the personal relationships sustain the professional ones. I think that's I know that's I that's a really good explanation of how these partnerships should be working. So, um, in your opinion, Atina, uh, how important is it actually to be building and forming partnerships for climate or for environment? Ooh, good question. Very, very important. I guess it's also recognizing that we can't do everything on our own or maybe convert. I'm speaking from the organizational standpoint because that's what I've been used to. But I think if when I was leading an AESS, if I thought now, oh, we don't need partnerships, we can sustain that for our, ourselves. Parang uh, downside of that is you're lowering your reach, parang echo chamber lang yung nagagawa. Everything is um, being seen by the same people. So you need to widen that, especially when it comes to advocacy. You need more people to see it so that they can be, you know, intrigued, curious and stuff um, so that they can eventually, um, you know, engage with it. Um, and yes, we also have different strengths um, as organizations um, and we need to see ourselves as allies. I think, I'm not sure, I, I, maybe this is, um, maybe it's, it can be quite competitive, I guess, kahit um, advocacy tayo. Parang we're not against each other. We're all for the same thing. So, bakit parang nagiging corporations na yung mga organization who are trying to get the most attention when it's really more of your advocacy that's supposed to be taking center? Um, and maybe that's why I mentioned that the challenges in the just the exchange of likes and shares as a partnership, um, as a point of partnership. I think it's really important that um, an organization or an individual or whomever, just you know, take a moment to figure out ano yung, kaya, ano yung strengths ko, ano yung kaya kong gawel, gawin, any strengths that I have, and then other people who can complement that and make it stronger. Because I think that it's always um, the advocacy and the impact is always stronger when you're able to do it with someone else. So that's something that I really believe in. Um, also, in the in the in the in the personal level, you're not gonna be solving the climate crisis on your own. You really need someone with you. Um, so yeah, whether that be you know just finding a friend or someone you want to do a project with, or on the organizational level, I think that's that's something that we can all um, talk about. Like that's something that we can all do. Um, and not to say that the 
like what I mentioned, the professional aspect isn't important, but more of like recognizing that there are humans as well who care about an issue that's just as important to them um, as, as it is to you. But I think that's the focal point of anything. Um, so, yeah. I like that point then. Uh, you mentioned that partnerships is like they they amplify your advocacy and it shouldn't be about who gets the most publicity. Now. That's wow. <laughs> it's a really good point. And um, I just wanted to ask before we start closing this up, uh, what's your favorite thing about sort of building partnerships within the climate space? What's like your favorite thing about it? What I like about building, personally, it's the kind of network that you can create because you can help someone. Kunwari. Maybe, kunwari, like you, I will say to you, Irene, if you need any more speakers, let me know. I, I can tell you, I can, um, I can maybe um, connect you to some people. And I think that's what's important is we know how to help each other. I think that's something that I really liked about working with different organizations in the past year. Um, learning how we can help each other, learn how we can make each other stronger. Um, and of course, personally, I've loved all of the people I've met. Um, I think it's really, you know, interesting. Um, in, my in, my, in my internship, for example, um, we are working on a campaign that's um, in partnership with an NGO based in Panay because they're closer to the community um, of this hydro um, power plant um, that would be um, affecting the communities and the biodiversity there. So they get that expertise because they're on, on ground. Um, and then where I intern, they're more on providing help and support in terms of campaigning. So it's learning how we can make each other stronger or when we come together, we're able to know how can we reach more people? How can we communicate this issue to them? So that's something that I really like because you get to meet people from all over the country. And I think as bad as it sounds, maybe that's what the pandemic kind of made us realize to really make use of the, the online platform. It was a, an um, opportunity to kind of connect to the people you wouldn't usually connect with. Um, so I think that once um, that happened, personally, it made me realize that, oh, we can't go without partnerships. We have to make partnerships if we want to be able to create more impact, especially for an issue as urgent as climate change. That's what I really loved about it because it's widening your, your, your worldview, basically. Getting different perspectives, seeing how other people agree with you, but at the same time, they might not 100% agree with you. So, yeah. We share the same thoughts, Atenina. It's actually also one of my favorite things about, you know, building partnerships or like friendships, guide friendships lang within the climate space. It's been so nice to like widen my own world view na parang wow I, I didn't realize na like we had so many different ideas out there so uh actually before we end i want to ask if you have any final sort of remarks or advices for people out there who want to form their own partnerships within the climate space or maybe if you have anything you'd like to plug <laughs> um to get plug moon <laughs> um um, check out the Philippine Association of Environmental Science Students um, on Facebook. That's facebook.com slash PAES National. Um, also, the Atene Environmental Science Society. And also, if you are, um, if you find yourselves uh, maybe looking for um, more training, I think climate, watch out the Climate Reality Project. They usually do trainings every year. Um, and um, advice, I guess, um, on people who are looking to form partnerships within the climate space. In climate change, we always talk about sustainability. Sustainability includes partnerships and what you do as an organization, including the impact that you'd like to make with those partnerships. So I think it's always discerning about anything that we do, if this is an important thing to do, um, if this will create the impact that it needs to create. Um, and everything. So yes, that's all from me. Yay! Thank you, Atenina and Globies. Please do check out Climate Reality Project. They're super cool, and it's a really like 
really insightful training program and it's super flexible then so you're gonna love it <laughs> so that's all for this episode thank you so much again ati nina for taking the time to sit down thank with you me. for having me of course it's our pleasure and thank you to everybody who listened up till now uh, we'll see you in the next one bye globies <laughs>